Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We're back in Oyama in Japan, Tochigi Prefecture. And as you just saw, we're at a hard off, book off combo store. And we're going to go inside, take the store tour, and see what kind of gaming wonders await us. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this underway. All right, y'all. And as we walk in here, I just want to point out that the bottom is actually a book off with its own set of games and consoles. Unfortunately, I didn't have time. But we're going to head upstairs up into the hard off. And we're going to start at the, I guess, the premiere uh, showcase, which I would say was one of the weaker ones compared to the other cases that they had on display. But nonetheless, we're going to take a look here. You know, we have the original Xbox One with the Hori uh, wired controller there for the PS4 and an assortment of other controllers with that Xbox Elite Series 2 controller really uh, standing out there for 20,000 yen. And then here, an assortment of uh, PlayStation 4 uh, in all, I guess, all flavors there, you know, from the Pro model, the original uh, fat model to the Slim. And then above that, we have our Nintendo 3DS systems. That's a wonderful system there. Um, and then we have, uh, what is that? A couple of Game Boy Advances and a Game Boy Color. Now the Game Boy Color is coming in at 10,000 yen. So about what, uh, with today's exchange rate, like I wanna say seven, between 70 and 80 bucks. Um, I guess, you know, that, that might not be too bad, but if you look hard, you could usually find a Game Boy Color for uh, less money. And then here we have our Switch systems and a few 2ds that purple one there for 7,000 yen that's really uh, a nice color and then the lovely psp and ps vita systems and it's kind of interesting that 3000 model with the blue has a kind of a there's there's a difference between uh, the two that were there and then we have our neo geo mini systems uh, we have the ukyo haomaru and nakaruru I hope I'm saying that right. And then the, the vanilla mini. And then the Famicom mini systems. And then we have that one with the Goku on it. I don't know uh, what's the deal with that one. And then we have Demon Blaze. Um, oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank here. But a Red Reamer uh, Firebrand. Look at the price on this. 45,000 yen. Now it's saying that it's in mint condition, but it isn't sealed. That is pricey. But here we're going to get into a few more cases, and these ones are definitely a lot more interesting. Well, I guess before that, above that, we just have an assortment of, uh, of a variety of goods. Now here, it's definitely worth searching because sometimes you could find, um, you know, interesting controllers and other knickknacks. But this is where the goods really start. Uh, I guess uh, there's, you know, stuff to see here, stuff that's worth it. You know, we have Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Uh, not really that game, but I don't know. Like usually, um, I usually like to start off here uh, when I go when I and I'm not actually filming like at the at the game display cases. But the one that really sticks out there is Silent Hill: Shattered Dreams for the PS2, and we're gonna have a closer look at that one as well as Sky Gunner. I have the North American version to that. But back to Silent Hill: uh, Shattered uh, Memories. Uh, 8,000 yen, and this is the first time that I see this in Japan for the PlayStation 2. And then judging by the screenshots, it has subtitles, so it's most likely um, English uh, voices. And then we're making our way down to the second shelf. We got the Rumblefish, and I believe um, if it's not already out, it's definitely planned, which is Rumble the Rumblefish 2. Kind of an interesting fighter, that one. I haven't played it myself, but just looking at the what I have looked up on it. Then we have the Rumble Roses by Konami. Some uh, PlayStation Portable titles. The Metal Slug Complete was there. We got Super Metroid for 8,000 yen. Now that is a little bit um, on the high side. You know, if you really look, you can probably get that for half that price. But sometimes, you know, like uh, the cost of looking uh, outweighs uh, the cost that you see it elsewhere. And we got uh, Rockman 7 for 1800 in the box. And that's not too bad of a price. And then back here, we'll just take a quick peek at what's kind of hiding back there. Because there is one, uh, one title that really caught me by surprise. And we're definitely going to have a closer look. And it's just kind of hidden back there. You just don't know. Sometimes you got to really crouch down to take a look at what they got. But we have Galaxy Fight there for the Neo CD. Uh, some Digimon games. 
for I want to say for like vanilla uh, PlayStation, there wasn't really anything that stood out to me. Um, although that Wizardry uh, title is pretty cool, the cover. We have Lunar, and then we have what's that? Dragon Quest Seven, and then we have an assortment of uh, Game Boy Advance games here. Again, nothing that really stands out to me, apart from um, I believe they had Wario Land Four, which is yeah, there it is uh, for two thousand two hundred yen, and that's pretty. That's a pretty cool game. And then we have the Legend of Zelda for the Famicom for eight thousand and uh, ten thousand respectively. A Super Game Boy for 3800 That one really shot up in price in the last few years, but then again, what has it? And then we have uh, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. This is an awesome game, which is currently, you know, it got a remaster on all major major platforms. And then here we go with our Mega Drive. Now this is uh, back here, you know, we see a Donkey Kong 64 way in the back, and next to that is the game in question, which we're going to look up, uh, or we're going to take a look at here shortly as well as this fat man we're gonna take a look at that one too but look at this the msx castlevania release in the box unfortunately it doesn't have the manual but look at these screenshots freaking awesome and it even has the original price 5800 yen now if you um factor in inflation that's like what about 7000 yen i looked that up i'm not i'm just not pulling out numbers but <laughs> But we have a fat man here. I've never heard of this one. And that was a kind of a cool cover there. But this shop, you know, it was, it's primarily like one aisle of games, but boy, is it jam packed. Like even in the bottom, you know, they have all these like totes and you know, you can spend, if you're really serious about, um, you know, <laughs> your game hunting, you could easily spend like uh, easily an hour, maybe, maybe two hours just kind of browsing this aisle alone. I mean, look at all this stuff. They got all the major consoles or systems as well as consoles. We're going to take a look at hardware at the very end of the video. So stick around or you can skip ahead. But look, we'll have uh, we'll take a look at this. What is this? Sonic Advance 2 for 1,500. Now, I picked this up uh, at a, another book off and it was just like the loose cart and that was 500 yen. But definitely uh, cool games, those those Sonic Advance ones. And then we have the Famicom Mini release uh, for the advance of Super Mario Bros. I actually got lucky and I found this in Tokyo in like mint condition for 280 yen. And then we have Beyblade Fighting Tournament for the Game Boy Color. I'm not sure if, if Beyblade is, uh, I'm not sure if it even got like super popular or if it's still around or if it's still a thing nowadays. And then we have this puzzle game. I do like this cover, kind of simplistic uh, and it seems to be some kind of puzzle game. Could be good, who knows. And then here, just a bunch of loose stuff. Sometimes you'll find some good stuff in here. I found uh, Gunstar Heroes um, for the Game Boy Advance for 200 yen. Not at this location, but you just never know what you'll find, you know. We have 800 yen there for uh, Rockman 03. And even a Virtual Boy game, uh, Galactic Pinball. And a Wonder Swan title, title <laughs> Final Fantasy. I wonder if those are any good. But here we have more stuff. Just a bunch of bunch of good stuff in here. And prices, you know, they're going to vary. But Mario Kart for the Advance for 600 yen, that's not too bad. Not bad at all. And then here we have, I have no idea what this is. Shaman something. Wonder if this is any good. Uh, the, the cover was actually kind of cool. And then we have uh, Mickey Mouse here. And I'm not sure what this is. And then this has an interesting title, Super Bombless. <laughs> Wonder if that's any good. But yeah, I mean, you could, you could spend a lot of time just like browsing in here. And, and you know, that's what I do. And even if I'm not filming, you know I'm going to be uh, cart, cart per cart, you know, just kind of flipping each one, see what they got. Like this, look at this, Lord of the King. I wonder if that's any good. And a lot of these titles did get releases out in uh, North America. We have Rockman 4 for 1,100 yen. And then we have like this Wacky Racers uh, film for the 3DO. I should have picked that up. Uh, that's kind of a curious thing there. And then we got one of these uh, girly games for the Saturn. Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast. 
and Panzer Dragoon for 800 yen. They actually have one in the display case, which we'll take a look at, and it's actually cheaper. And then we have a uh, Don't Panic Seaman for 800 yen. That now this could be missing the microphone. Who knows? But it is a uh, markdown for a reason. And then here we have the retro uh, display case. Well, another one. And this one has quite a few goodies. We have a Ninja Gaiden 3 there for 3,000 yen for the Famicom. We have a Splatterhouse, the Chibi one for 2,500 yen. Dragon Spirit with its uh, complete in the box. I'm not sure if it includes the manual there. And a couple of Master uh, System games. And then we have with the Game Gear there, we have Bare Knuckle for 4,000 yen. And a, and a Rockman World 5 for the Game Boy. And a few more Game Boy games. A lot of Pokemon stuff there, but I'm not really too familiar with uh, with Pokemon. But we have a Castlevania Adventure for 1,500. Although the cover there is a little bit beat. But that's a freaking awesome game and it has a, definitely a lot better than the first Castlevania Adventure. Although I do like that one too. And then, uh, what do we have here? Game Boy Advance games. Nothing that really kind of calls out to my attention. But we have what Sonic Advance, the original down there, and then Rockman 04. Those are probably the more, the ones that appeal to me more. Then we have Res for the Sega Dreamcast. We have Viewpoint, R-Types. Uh, what else? Ranma 1 half. And then up top, we have uh, Sega Rally Championship Plus, the X-Band Edition. Now that one does support like the Saturn 3D pad. And then a, and then look at that Double Dragon for uh, the Neo Geo CD coming in at 3,800 yen. And then we have a couple of Game Boy North American releases there. We got Space Invaders and like a Dragon Quest type. I, I think that's what that was. We have World Heroes for the Neo CD. Uh, what else do we got here? Yeah, and there's that double dragon next to real bout. And then here, what do we have? What's, what's interesting? What calls the attention? That Cowboy Bebop, Panzer Dragoon, the uh, Azel for the or Panzer Dragoon RPG, a couple of adult themed games for the Saturn. Now the big one here is, look at this, Top Hunter for 3,000 yen. That's actually not too bad of a deal. Um, but as you like, this store was actually uh, the lights were pretty intense, and a lot of these games are getting like a beat down, so they're slowly fading. You know, uh, we have Mr. Bones here, but they're slowly fading, and I, I think that uh, that Top Hunter is uh, suffering from that. We have Burning Rangers for 3,000 yen. You know, I've had a Saturn since. Oh God, since I was a teenager, and that's one game that I have not, to this to this day, that I have not played. I wonder if it's any good. I'm not sure what this uh, PlayStation game, but what that was, but it looked kind of pretty cool cover. Then we have our Super Famicom games, that Mickey Mania 2000 yen. Freaking awesome game. What's this one? Terra Enigma. I, I think that's what that is. And then uh, a couple, or a few uh, Famicom games. And you betcha we're going to have a closer look, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 for 2,000 yen. And then we have uh, The Legend of Zelda. We have this uh, Castlevania, the Kid Dracula. For 1,800, that's a cart only. That's not too bad of a price, I think. And then Metal Gear for the MSX. I believe, or no, that's probably Famicom. Because it has that little hole, and like the MSX games have that little hole, but I think that was Famicom. And then we have DuckTales 2. And then here's like the adult games for uh, for the Saturn. The Private Idol Volume 6 and uh, another one. I'm not sure what that volume is. But here we have um, Amiibos. And then we have uh, more Amiibos. Now some of these are actually kind of expensive. We have uh, Metroid for 10,000 yen there. That used to be a hundred bucks, not anymore, but that's got to say something to uh, the rarity of this one. I'm not really sure. I have a few Amiibos myself, but I'm not like hardcore into them. At one point I was, but but look at that, 10,000 yen. I wonder what kind of data I saved on that thing. 
And then what do we have here? Some N64 boxed titles with a, a Master System Final, Fan or Final Fantasy Star. Look at me mixing up the, the series. And then we have a couple of loose cards for the Neo Geo, Art of Fighting 2 and Fatal Fury 2. Now those are like about 3,000 each, more or less, and you can usually find both of those complete for that price. But it's not every day that you see Neo cards uh, marked down that low. And then here's another case kind of dedicated to a few Pokemon titles. And more Game Boy uh, of all flavors here. And another North American title, Tetris DX. And then we have uh, Zelda there for 3000 That's kind of a cool cover. Link looks so uh, cheery. I wonder if this Tetris DX is uh, any good. Original Tetris, now in color. 4,000 yen. And here we have like a little basic type of game. And then here's the Super Famicom Wii controller for 2,500 yen. What else do we have here? We have this one. Look at this Super Famicom that has like a calculator like Thing built right into it. I've never seen that controller. I'm starting to get into collecting like these odd controllers and uh, not that I wanted to pick that one up but anyhow we have uh, what do we have here some 3DS systems. I recently picked one up in the junk section um, at a hard off for 2,000 yen and I was kind of blown away. It was marked down. Now this is the junk section, but the, that 3DS was marked down because of a yellow screen on the bottom, but I, I couldn't tell anything. Now this is probably like the weakest area of the store, the junk section. I didn't really see anything that stood out. Um, you know, we have this train controller, but usually I find some like good stuff here, but I didn't really see anything. This, this would be okay, the racing controller for the Dreamcast, although it is bulky. Now, one thing that they did have a lot of in the junk section is these clone consoles. There were so many. And you know what? Like, maybe one of these clone systems is actually uh, pretty good, you know? Who knows? But look at this. What do we have? The Duel. The FC Duel. Super Famicom and Famicom uh, compatible. Then we have, like, this whole racing get up here. Now, this is about, like, a thousand bucks. PC, PS3, and PS4. And now it's starting. Look at this. PlayStation VR in the junk section. <laughs> Expect to see a lot of those uh, uh, in the coming years in the junk section. Now, they did have a lot of junk consoles mixed in with the, in the retro uh, display case. Anything that has like a green tag up top is uh, technically considered junk. And usually it's because it's missing a vital piece to test it or it's just untested. But here we have a top loader, a uh, Famicom for 12,000 yen next to a couple Hori pads for the 64. Um, Game Boys down below, just an assortment of consoles there. And then we have this other one, this other top loader for 8,800 yen. Now I asked what the difference was and I, they, they couldn't really answer my question. And I think it was just at the time that they were, uh, whoever sold it to them, they were just offering more. So those have probably been sitting there for quite some time. Then we have the family pocket. This is kind of like a little TV with wireless pads. And then uh, what do we have here? PC Engine, the core graphics. And then we have a Duo RX. But see, it has the green tag and it's junk. We have uh, the, the original PC Engine ROM ROM. And we have another one in the back. And some of these are just like missing little things uh, or just untested. But, you know, with a little bit of work or, you know, with the right cables and like the, the right system card, those things are probably going to work. Got a Wonder Swan there, a PSP 3000. What else do we have here? A 3DS uh, XL or a LL as they call it. And then we have this Game Boy Light. Look at the price of this thing. It's as expensive as uh, Demon Blaze there uh, for 45,000 yen. Now, the Game Boy Light's freaking expensive. I have no idea. I wonder if this thing is like sealed. Although Hard Off itself does have like machines that kind of reseal. 
but they're not trying to cheat you. They they usually just say what's uh, what's up with it on the tag. Now, see, this is the thing. Like you know, up here, just kind of chilling. We're two Neo Geo CD joysticks for four thousand yen. There's another one in the back there, and those actually aren't too bad. And then we have what the Mario Kart. Uh, what is that? comes with a controller it looks like a Wii U and boxed PlayStation 4s and you know we're gonna continue here with the hardware because there, there's half the aisles like just hardware look at this look at all this goodness and you know actually Oyama has two hard ops so they have that the two hard offs. They have the Surugaya. They have a uh, Gale. They have a few other game shops. So if you ever find yourself out here, you know it's probably you can make easily a day out of all this. We got some Wii's there. We got a PlayStation 9000 unit for 8,000 yen. I hear a lot of good things about the 9000 model. Then we have the 360 for 7,000 yen. And notice that none of them have the green tag, so they're not junk. And then this, 15,000 yen for this GameCube storage unit. And I believe that includes the console. And then we have another PlayStation 9000. And that's coming in at 4,000 yen. And then this N64, this transparent one for uh, 10,000 yen. And next to that, we have another one. The clear blue is what they're calling it, but it has a purplish controller there. Although that clear blue, that clear blue is freaking awesome. And I recently got a Nintendo 64 for free from a friend, so that's a that's a console that I never had uh, growing up. But I would loan my friends out my Saturn, and they would loan me the N64, so I was able to play a few games on it. Pretty great system that N64, as well as the Famicom. And look at this, the 3D uh, glasses for the Famicom for 3,300 yen. And just looking at the condition there, that looks pretty decent. I wonder how the 3D is on that thing. We have a 360 there for 5,000 yen. Recently, my 360 just went out. I was playing it and the power just kind of boom. So I got to figure that out. And then here, look at this thing. So goofy, but this is for the super graphics that connects it to the to the ROM ROM system. Three thousand three hundred yen. <laughs> it looks like some kind of like weird uh, medical equipment. Oh man, but the PC Engine such a great system. Now here we have this little thingy. I think that allows you to save games, and it requires its own uh, batteries. We got a PS1 for 3,500, a Dreamcast for 6,000, and another, uh, a few, a uh, couple of boxed uh, Famicoms, Super Famicoms. And look at that, the condition isn't too bad. Super Famicom, Super Nintendo, freaking awesome systems. And then we have another PS1, what is it coming in at? 5,500 yen with the box. But is it yellowed? That's the question. Now this is now this one in here is something that uh, really had me thinking. Look, the camera's even shaking. That's how nervous it got me. The Midnight Black PlayStation Two, six thousand yen. Man, that thing that thing would be uh, that would look awesome in my uh, in the game room. But I already have like three PlayStation Twos. So no way I'm going to get another one. I'm going to have to sell two to get one more. What else do we have here? Oh, I, I love this fight stick. The Mayflash uh, Arcade Elites, the F300. I actually have this. 9,900 yen. I picked mine up from uh, Amazon. Freaking awesome fighting stick that's compatible with a lot of the, the, a lot of the modern uh, consoles. Here we have a boxed uh, PC Engine Core Graphics. I have this uh, system and it's an awesome little system. Although I might sell it now that I have a Duo R. But freaking, uh, I, I do love its design right down to the color scheme. That, that, that lettering there just pops. 
And then what do we have here? Uh, 5,500 model PS1 for 2,000 yen. And then in the back, we have another PC Engine ROM ROM. Now this one is considered junk because they don't have a system card to actually properly test it, which means that the CD unit is probably powering up and the disc is spinning, which, <clears throat> you know, most likely this thing works. And it comes with the PC Engine Core Graphics 2 controller, that little orange red one. Was it, which is actually also cool looking. Look at that. I was honestly, I was actually thinking about picking this up too. But I had recently got the, the Duo R, and that's the only reason that I didn't get it. Although, it, you know, that thing has me uh, thinking. And then over here we have the uh, Super Famicom complete with the carrying case. This is a bit of a collector's uh, piece. Although I have no room in my game room for, for such things. <laughs> Look at this. English and Spanish, this one. But it's like a... Looks like an N64 controller, but it's like a gun combo. And I think it plays Famicom cards. But anyhow, guys, we're going to take a look at the things that I decided to pick up. And, you know, I wasn't going to let this one go, this, uh, this Top Hunter. A little bit sun faded, but, you know, it was complete with the spine card, the little insert, 3,000 yen, no scratches on the disc. Freaking awesome game, and for that price, I couldn't let it go. As well as this uh, Famicom, the top loader, 8,800 yen. Although this one, I have a little bit of uh, buyer's remorse, but that's everything that I got there. But anyhow, for the next episode, we're going to be taking another trip down to Kobe, and we're going to be checking out uh, a few, a couple of game shops. And, you know, definitely subscribe and we will uh, to, and hit the bell, you know, all that good stuff so you can get the notifications. Anyhow, my name is JJ and I hope to see you soon. Ciao.